Welcome back to my channel. My name is April if you're new here and today we are going to be doing a tier ranking video for Monster Romance. I actually got this idea from Hannah from Hannah Blackwell. Um, she did this video recently so I'll link it in the description box down below but I thought it was a great idea. I've read a lot of Monster Romance and I have some very specific taste. <laughs> Um, and some not specific taste. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how it is, but there are 28 books here. Just a little side note, I did not put any sentient object romances on this list. These are all creatures. All creatures, all the time. Let's get started with the list. Okay, I was not very creative with the categories. Um, by the way, I am using Tear Maker, so that's where I'm doing this from. Um, so I'm just using Gen Z slang as my categories because that's apparently what the kids understand these days and I am super cringe about all of it, but I'm gonna use it anyways. First top tier is gonna be eight. This book eight. If it was the most amazing thing in the planet, it ate. Um, then it's bussin'. If it's really good, it's bussin', okay? I don't understand these, some of them. Um, and then mid, clearly, this book was just okay. All right, mid. And then we have cringe, totally cringe. Technically, every book on this list probably would be in this category for, for me, some of these eight. So let's start it off. All right, Velvet Steel. Velvet Steel was really cool. It was about a um, creature in a castle, very gothic. Um, and obviously there's this total running joke about a certain anatomy of a man being velvet steel. Um, that joke is throughout this book. <laughs> and I, the thing I loved about this book is that the monster was actually monstrous, like a very monstrous, not a sexy monster here, but she still loved him anyways. Um, this one's blessing. I really enjoyed it. Um, I think it was really good and I really loved the subtle humor in this one and the gothic vibes. Um, then we have this Kimberly Lemming book. Um, what's a girl got to do to get on the naughty list? <laughs> it's Kimberly Lemming. Would it go in anything but eight or bussin? This one I think is going to go in bussin. Um, Krampus story. So the creature in here is Krampus and he's come to take her away because she's been naughty or no, take her, her boyfriend away because he's been naughty. I can't remember, but she wants to be that naughty girl. <laughs> for Krampus because Krampus is monstrously hot. Um, it's Kimberly Lemming. It has a lot of humor in it, but um, not really her signature humor, but it was really good. I really enjoyed it. No getting over you, this book eight. I don't usually like the sweet monster romances or sweet romances in general. This is a sweet romance I can get behind. This poor ogre. Um, he's kind of an outcast in his little clan and he just is always by himself and he's very lonely. And then you have this girl who falls through a hole in the ground and he kind of nurses her back to health. And it's honestly the most adorable thing I've ever read in my life. Like there's a language barrier so they can't really talk to each other and he doesn't know what to feed her. So he just keeps bringing her rocks because he e eats rocks. <laughs> it's so, so cute. Super sweet, amazing monster romance. Everybody should eat it. I'm sorry, everybody should read it. I mean, you can eat it too, because then, then you would have ate it. <laughs> and then we have A Burn for Jack. I can't remember what I actually read in this book when I read it, but I think it's Bussin'. Let me actually check really quick because I get this one and Seduced by the Pumpkin King mixed up all the time. Okay, Burn for Jack is definitely going in Bussin because this is the one where there's kind of like a bully going on. There's a bully situation going on and it gets a little gruesome, but also really hot. Um, I think it like it would be mid if it didn't do one specific thing that I absolutely love to see in books and that made it Bussin. So that's where I'm gonna put that one. 
Tentacles and teeth, I'm gonna actually put in mid, although I really liked this one too. It was kind of between a tentacled creature, that's a bartender, and then her roommate, which is a werewolf, and then this girl. So you have a female, female, male relationship, so why choose? And um, I thought the relationship in here was really cute. Um, it wasn't a very involved story. In fact, if there was just the female-female relationship in the story, it would have been good as well. But then you add the third layer of the werewolf into it. And honestly, they all just kind of make a really good trio. So I really liked that one. Creepy Court Anthology. I wish I had the better cover for this one. But <laughs> the Creepy Court Anthology is a obviously anthology of a lot of short stories um novellas about an 80s mall and all the creatures that own all the shops in there and the people who buy things at the mall and the shenanigans they get into some of the stories are really good like i think there's like a creepy pasta one that's very much like a back doors or back rooms, sorry, back rooms, like style of story. And then some of them are just okay. Um, but I really liked the anthology as a whole. It was a lot of nice, a good variety of monster stories. Dawn won Velociraptor. So I couldn't decide if dino romances were part of monster romances, but I went with it. And this is my favorite lola faust book i love don juan velociraptor he's a science experiment gone wrong i think <laughs> and he's super famous because he puts off these pheromones and all of the girls go crazy for him um and then you have this <laughs> was a uh, journalist she's a journalist she's a serious journalist okay she will not fall for his pheromone induced high okay she will get the interview that she needs um does that go the way she thinks it does nope 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 not at all but don juan velociraptor in which is the problem with a lot of these other dino <laughs> books is that he is sentient he has a mind and thoughts of a human being and he's a very intriguing character i loved this one from lola faust I'm gonna put it in at eight. Um, I'm just gonna put in the other <laughs> uh, dinosaur ones so they can. The Utah Raptor one was mid, it was okay. And this one, Triceratops and Bottoms. Super cringe, do not read, hated it. <laughs> Listen. Um, again, the thing about these is when they're monstrous, I like them to actually have human thoughts and feelings and emotions and not just be animals. And that's what this book is. She just has sex with animals and it is gross. It is bestiality. I do not like. Okay. Also the heroine in here, she should be in jail. <laughs> Super cringe. Hated it. Um, I mean, if you want to read something that's super out there, by all means, by all means, just know that um, it's not good. It's not. <laughs> Escape the Island of Eldridge Lust. This one is not really a romance. It's technically an erotic horror. So do not expect an HEA from this, but it is a choose your own adventure book and it ate. It ate so many different creatures in here, so many awesome, really creative creatures, and they are all trying to kill you in very pleasurable ways. And then, of course, when you die, you get to make another choice again and try and survive the Eldritch Lost Island as you're trying to escape it. It's so good. I am really loving Choose Your Own Adventure books. Um, I actually was just watching another one today that I really want to read. It's not a, it's not a romance at all. Um, it's another horror one, but I love those books. I need to bring them back. They need to bring, I need more. I need more Choose Your Own Adventure ones. It was great. 
Seduced by the swamp creature. This one's going in bussin. I loved the swamp creature in this. He's clearly like a misunderstood swamp creature. And she's just like a researcher in the swamp and she meets him. And you know, he's kind of reclusive and he's again, kind of sweet. But also there's this whole action element with this in the swamp and I really love the setting of it. This one is more of like a summery blockbuster type of monster romance rather than a spooky season monster romance but a creature nonetheless honestly really good plucked by the orc um cringe <laughs> cringe i dnf to this book um only because again it is super sweet and not like this was just a book about a lot of conversations <laughs> so it really wasn't feeling the monstrous side to this. It was more historical romance. I'm still looking for the historical romance, monster romance crossover book of my dreams. Um, this was not it. I totally hated it because it was just a lot of jibber jabbering talking and uh, less, less talky, more action, okay? However, the polar exp Edition. Um, this is kind of more like a shifter romance, but um, I'm gonna put it in a monster romance category. You have a polar bear shifter, and there are a lot of other creatures in this one. So I think like if you want like between that crossover of monster slash shifter romances, definitely read this one. Super cute, loved it. Burn. He's a polar bear daddy. That's what he is, and he is fantastic. <laughs> The ghost's pet. Um, I'm gonna put this in mid. The ghost pet wasn't as good as the other one I have on here, which is the phantom's pet. The phantom's pet was more monstrous, more gore, more killing, but also he's got this like your mine mentality. The ghost's pet kind of has that too but it almost feels like she is coerced in a way by the end. And so that's the only reason why I didn't love it too much. Um, it wasn't like a very traditional HEA, even though there is an HEA. It just was more like she's under a spell type of thing. Stealing the troll's heart. I'm putting this one in mid as well. Again, it was just too sweet for me. This one is a troll romance and they're from, you know, conflicting countries and they meet, she holds a knife to his throat. They separate and they actually keep thinking about each other at some point and try to find each other again. And they see each other again after a while and they decide that they still like each other. And it was again, just very sweet. It was good, but it was mid for me. Seduced by the Pumpkin King. I'm putting it in Bussin. I really enjoyed this one. Again, I get this one and Burn for Jack mixed up all the time, but I think this one, she's kind of run off into the Pumpkin King's pumpkin patch by a crazed town. And then things happen. I love the vine action in this. It, it does end up being sweet by the end, but mostly monstrous with a lot of like tendrils, vines on the skin type stuff. And I really enjoyed it. Whispers of the Deep. This is with like mermen type of creatures. They don't call them mermen, but that's what they are. This one was mid. Um, I expected more from this. It was trying, I think it was just too long for me. This was much longer than it should have been, but I like a lot of different separate scenes in this book. And I am actually really wanting to read the second book in this series because it's with a character that I thought was more interesting than these characters were. This is kind of like almost like a Bioshock to me feeling book. You have an underwater city. She's the engineer of, and he is looking for a way to basically infiltrate and kill all the city because they are ruining his ocean. So of course he takes her captive She's a human, she can't live underwater. So there's a lot of things that happen and he keeps trying to move her to places. It was really cool. Um, monsters, but smut, okay. It says monsters, smut, but this title of this book is Getting Kinky with Krampus. This is the Tabitha Lovelace book. It's another Krampus book. I don't know. I didn't think it was into Krampus, but apparently I am. Uh, I thought it was okay. It was very mid. 
Um, but I really like Tabitha Lovelace's writing and I love her ideas. Like, and I love her covers. Like these covers are fantastic. <laughs> really loved them. The Kraken Sacrifice, unfortunately, was not my favorite. It was a very cringe book. Um, I don't think it was that bad. Like a lot of people don't like this book, but I don't think it was that bad. It just wasn't that great. You know what I mean? It could have been better. Run and Hide. Um, I'm also gonna put this in mid. It was just okay. There was creatures, they chase her, and then it ended. <laughs> It was a very short audiobook that I read. This one, after some time, I'm going to put it in cringe. Um, I like Beatrix Hollow's books, but this one was too, like, confusing. She is a leprechaun, but she's called something else. And then she, it's a, it's a white cheese monster romance book with like a doulahan, um, a headless horseman type character, and another leprechaun, and then an incubus. And they're all trying to steal her luck. Like she has luck. She's in the casinos making her money or whatever. And they're trying to steal her luck from her. There is some action moments in this. But overall, I think I was just really confused. Monstrous Heat uh, look. I kind of really enjoyed Monstrous Heat. Again, you have like a shifter story. But he does shift into a dino. <laughs> And apparently this one is going to be Y cheese as well. But for the first one, you're just with this one dino. She's on an expedition or whatever, looking for dino bones. She gets left in the forest and there is like people after her. So she runs and she kind of runs out of the bounds of where she's supposed to be. And this dino scents her and is like trying to save her, trying to keep her safe. And I don't know, I kind of really enjoyed it. It ended very climactically. And to the point where I was like, no, don't stop there, come on. Cause you kind of are like introduced to the other dinos at the end of this book. And I'm like, I don't want to see the other dinos. Who are the other men? Of course they're all hot, right? Um, the Dragon's Bride, I think at this point is just a very classic monster romance. Again, the dragon in here, He's, he's a softy. He's a big softy. I wouldn't say he's sweet, but he's definitely a softy. And there's some interesting anatomy. So it works. This, this one works. And the cover is like absolute eight. Absolute eight with these covers. Mm -hmm. To ravish a rogue might surprise people. I did not like it. I did not like to ravish a rogue. I, I mean, technically it could be in mid but to me, it just really didn't work in any way, shape, or form. Um, I found myself just wanting to get through it. I don't think it was monstrous enough. I don't think it was weird enough. I don't think it was like plot heavy enough. Though I don't think the romance went far enough. It was just very, I mean, let's put it in mid just to be nice, I guess. I don't think it was cringe. I think it was mid. Um, it just wasn't enough for me because I've read a lot of these. Okay, Wet Hot Allosaurus. I'm going to put it in Bussin. <laughs> Wet Hot Allosaurus probably was the better of the ones that I read of the dinosaur books before I read Don Juan Velociraptor. So Wet Hot Allosaurus is just weird. Okay, and he's definitely very animal-ish. But he does like communicate with her telepathically. So I was okay with it. But then he just does like animal things by the end. And <laughs> it was one of those books I was like, I was like, okay, he did that. That happened. Um, I think her arm gets bit off at some point. <laughs> this or shot off. I don't remember what exactly what happens, but I remember it being, wow, okay, that happened. <laughs> Philomena and the Seven Deaths, um, again, is a book that I read recently with a why choose monster situation. Philomena keeps dying and she has seven deaths to do to save the world and the world. I can't remember. The, the, the more times she dies, the more monsters that come to her. 
and some of them are really awesome and want to do her and some of them want to kill her. That's all I really want to say about that book. It was cool. It was cool. I will say Cthulhu is in this book and he's cool. So this book was bussin'. <laughs> I'm not doing very good on my Gen Z slang. And then the last book is another CM Nascosta book. This book has a phrase that absolutely makes me cringe. Um, he likens something to like her being a flower and him being a butterfly. And it just, I've heard the phrase before, but in this book, it felt cringe and I didn't like it. Again, I'm still looking for my historical romance, my historical monster romance book of my dreams. And I haven't found it yet, but I'm still looking because I do love historical romance and I do love monster romance. So one would think that I would like them both together. <laughs> Those are my monster favorites. A lot of mid and good books, but just a few absolute favorites. Let me know if you've read a monster romance that you really love. Again, thanks Hannah for the idea because I think this idea ate. <laughs> Um, as always, have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye.